Fantastic to be live here at the Juniper Networks booth. Fantastic breakfast event here. We take any moment here with Mike to just follow up on that. Some amazing themes about all things data center and some of the key trends consumers are looking at right now and also telco partners too. So let's recap the, the breakfast, I think, as a summary. What are people asking you about as much? And also, just when we look here, well, how great is it to all be back together at MWC? It's amazing, isn't it? MW, the, <laughs> the magnitude of MWC is, this is my first one. Oh, wow, amazing, fantastic. And I've never seen something this big. Um, it's incredible. And the trends from last year, I think, have really accelerated, yeah. particularly when it comes to like use of cloud, particularly hybrid cloud, yeah. but also trends like sustainability as well. So let's drill into all things data center. Of course. What are your customers asking for most at the moment? And what uh, challenges are they facing? You know, how are you supporting that? I think, so strategically, the, the telcos are really looking at what's the right role of cloud? Absolutely. Like, are hyperscalers, are they partners? Yes. Are they going to be competitors? How do you maintain control of your business? Absolutely. What's the right balance between sort of outsourcing and keeping things on-prem and kind of in your wheelhouse? Answering those questions, that is a fundamental strategic question Absolutely. I think people, everyone's looking at right now. Indeed, I went to a number of sessions yesterday and also had some particular conversations and it was you know, 5G native to 5G core, yep. but in particular the role of hybrid cloud and giving people that choice and working more in a collaborative way across the ecosystem. So I'd love to think about that in more detail. So CSPs, hyperscalers working together, where do you see that trajectory? Is it more collaboration or are we still seeing separation in that marketplace? Uh, so I, I think there's a big strategic question yes. that has to be answered yep. first. Right? One is if there's profit pools, what's the distribution of those profit pools? There's probably three dominant models. Um, one model would be that it's going to be hyperscaler led, yes. in which case they dominate where the pricing is and so the telcos can. lose control of their business. Good. In some ways, maybe they get relegated to dumb pipes, which is exactly. scary exactly. for everybody. Uh, the other model is that maybe it's going to be uh, telco led, mm -hmm. that the cloud connect connectivity is just part of their service, in which case they maintain full control. And then there's somewhere in between, which yes. is maybe it's a meet in the market. Um, but the challenge, even with meet in the market, by yeah. the way, is if what somebody's going for is uh, cloud connectivity. Yes, yes. Then who determines the pricing and how does that impact the overall bill and where's the account control? So I think it's like a really, really hard uh, question. Absolutely. My guess right now is that there's going to be a, a bunch of different approaches to this. Indeed, indeed. Um, and it's going to come down to you know individual execution on telco cloud initiatives Absolutely. and what people can do with the technology to drive customer needs. Definitely, and I'm hearing that in conversations as well. There's definitely a personalized strategic approach here yeah. and there's not a clear, consistent answer. So I think definitely this one, when we come back in 12 months time, I think it's going to be a big evolution here. So I'm really agree. excited to see where we've reached. What's your take on cloud, particularly hybrid cloud, related to this? Because again, kind of enabling some of the benefits we've discussed today and, and, and yesterday as well, really key, I think, as a way forward and again, supporting that choice as well. What's your take on that? Uh, so I think cloud is absolutely happening. I think absolutely. every enterprise has a cloud strategy. Uh, some have an all cloud strategy, yes. some have a hybrid cloud strategy, some have a multi-cloud strategy. I think we're, as it relates to the telcos, yes. the question is going to be, what role do they play? Exactly, um, exactly. Where there used to be, let's say, carrier hotels mm -hmm. in the, the colos, um, I think the cloud, or the, the carriers have an opportunity now to be cloud uh, hotels. Yes. So they offer connectivity to different cloud mm -hmm. services. And interestingly, if if enterprises are going to go all in on multiple clouds, then having the, the role where you provide the off-ramp into those clouds, that could actually be a, a lucrative position Absolutely. for the telcos to really you know, make their stand. Definitely, I couldn't agree more with that. And I think just generally, my particular take on the ecosystem play as well, I think we are in many areas going more that way. Yeah. And I think you know, if we take sustainability, even security to a certain example as well, you know, some of these threats and challenges are so big, probably the le biggest learning point from the pandemic is the beauty of coming together and how we can solve some of these challenges. So that's my personal take. I think we're probably going more in direction in this particular thematic as well, but I can't wait to revisit this because it is one where there's a lot to play for, isn't there? Really interesting. Well, I think the technology bits yes. that enable all of it. So yes. you know, there's real questions about where's the DMARC, where does, you know, the, where does the telco end and where yes. does the cloud begin? And I think Absolutely. there's questions about how our service is going to be offered. As people grapple with those, I think the technology choices are going to you know, have to support the, the strategic Absolutely. choices. I think what we're seeing here, what I hear from customers all the time is let's get the strategy nailed first. Let's exactly. look at what the technology enables. And if the technology is really like a catapult into yes. what we think the decision is, then I think that they move forward. If the technology becomes a constraint, exactly. then I think then it's a, it's a different type of discussion. Absolutely, totally agree with that. So Mike, how are you supporting customers at Juniper Networks with these different challenges, but from a tech stance, but also facilitation, like navigating the strategy we were talking about just now? Yeah, the, the strategy discussion really is having the, the, yes. the conversation with folks about you know what are they trying to do. Absolutely. I think there's things that we can add to that, that conversation. Um, on the, the technology,
technology side, I mean, our whole entire thesis is around operations. Absolutely. And so for us, it's about delivering services. How do you get services up? How do you go and deliver them? How do you monitor? How do you connect customers to clouds, customers to telcos? I think that the operations thesis that we have is yes. really part and parcel with where this entire world is going. I love that. Fantastic. So that's fantastic focusing on that. And I'm going to go if we've got time for one bonus question, if I may. Okay. We were talking about diversity earlier, weren't we? Yeah. And I have this big, big mission around moving from diversity, inclusion, equity to belonging. Because that's where I think there's a missing link that sometimes in this discussion. I have a series called 365. It's all about visibility to role models in tech. So I want to help people be more curious and creative and confident about tech, whether it's as a career or just using technology, you know? If you had a nugget of advice to share, could I ask you to share what that would be? You know, why this is a great space to work? I think the diversity of, of, of challenge is actually really interesting. It's such a dynamic space, but if you could share something, tip of advice, what would that be and why? And we'll share that on our role models in tech series. I think you'd be brilliant. Sure. I think in terms of advice, look, I think everybody, um, instead of thinking of your career as like a ladder and it's step after step after step, think about your career like a rock climbing wall. Yes. And sometimes you got to go left and sometimes you got to go right. Sometimes Absolutely. you even have to go down to get around obstacles. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it opens up the opportunity. Indeed. I think what Indeed. people need is uh, rich relationships. They need to have kind of a, a, a good opportunity to see lots of different things because Absolutely. your signature impact Absolutely. is not necessarily going to be around the thing that you think it is. Yes. And so giving yourself kind of the widest aperture possible, I think, opens up your, your career for you. I like that as well. I, I talk about the rise of the generalist. And I think having that one specialism really, really good, but you need to underpin it with that diversity of, of skill sets. And yeah. I, I think imagine a toolbox of things that you can dip into. And I think gives you that confidence to be agile to change. So look at tech skills, but also look at things like empathy, emotional intelligence, and problem solving skills as well. And we'll share some resources about exactly that. So there's lots of ways to get involved and never be afraid to reach out, I would say as well. You know, nine times out of 10, someone will support you. And if they said, no, frankly, it probably weren't the right person to ask. So go for it again and ask again and don't stop. So thank you all for watching and listening. Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. And follow us more for more live from MWC 23. Thank you all. Brilliant. Hello and welcome to Mobile World Congress 2023. I'm Mike Bouchong. I am your podcast host for today. A bit of a change in roles. I'm joined by Sally Eves. Now, Sally, I have a question for you. Go for it. Yesterday Go for was it. a big moment for you personally. Yes. And it, wasn't, it had nothing to do with any of the booths around Mobile World Congress. It didn't. It didn't. What happened to you yesterday? Oh, my, that's really, really kind of you, Mike. So yeah, yesterday, I, I had a bit of news and I hadn't shared it or anything like that. And Mike has very kindly just done this on me, which is lovely. Um, but yeah, I was made a UK, UN, uh, Women in Tech Ambassador, that type of thing, basically. And it's, yeah, it just means an awful lot for me. And, you know, I have a non-for-profit called Aspirational Futures that's so dear to my heart. And some of the work around that has led to this, I think. And I didn't know it was happening. So it's just really heartening. And, yeah, let's just shine a light on getting more people involved in tech, being curious, being confident, and let's break down those barriers to access. It's what it's all about. So that's really kind of you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> so you mentioned your non-profit. Yes. Tell yes. us a bit about what your non-profit does. So we do work across technology, education, and social impact. So we do a lot of scholarships that are based around STEAM skills, so absolutely around technology and particularly around AI and 5G and security themes, but also empathy and emotional intelligence and, and how to learn. So things like metacognition, now, I'm not keen on the gym, but this is like gym for your brain, and it helps you kind of think smarter, because we all learn in different ways, don't we? We present differently, but sometimes education systems are quite linear, so it's helping you know every way learning is actually okay, you're okay, but to support you identify what works well for you. So yeah, smart thinking and smart tech, it helps us all.